The XPS 13 Plus is one of the boldest laptops I've ever seen. It's like Dell sent a laptop back from the future Terminator style. It has a keyboard that stretches from edge to edge with no gaps between the keys, the haptic trackpad is hidden underneath the wrist rest, and there's a capacitive function row that just keeps things looking really clean and nice without the confusion of Apple's touch bar. With all those features and the most computing power Dell has ever put into a 13-inch Ultra Portable, the XPS 13 Plus should be perfect, right? Well, not quite. It's an admirable achievement, I'll give Dell that, but it also feels like their designers just really emphasize style over usability. Take that haptic trackpad for one. When I first got my hands on it in December, I was floored by just how unique that design was, but I was also kind of instantly worried about what it meant for usability. It's certainly a cool design when the computer is on, the motors kick in underneath the trackpad and allow you to swipe and click as you're used to, but you can't actually see where that trackpad area is. Now, of course, haptic trackpads aren't anything new. Apple's been using them for years on the MacBook Pros, and you know, they were just starting to show up in Windows laptops. We saw it in the Surface Laptop Studio. The idea is sound uh, because it means, you know, if you don't have a mechanical trackpad, if it's not clicking up and down, it could end up being more reliable because dust and grime can't get underneath. On the XPS 13 Plus, that technology is just a little more uncanny because you don't know where the trackpad is. You assume it's in the middle, but if you're typing away and looking up at the screen, you, you could easily miss the trackpad area, so you can't tell you're hitting it until you see the cursor moving or if you click down and you feel it. That's not something we think about very often, but it goes a long way towards making us feel more confident as we're, you know, browsing the web or scrolling through documents. On the XPS 13 Plus, just doing something easy like right-clicking can feel a bit like trial and error. Is my finger too much to the right and off of the wrist rest? Is it too much to the left and doing a left click? It's hard to tell. I really don't think doing something so simple should be frustrating, especially on a computer that's meant to show us the future of computing design. The invisible trackpad basically feels like a party trick, you know? It's something that can impress your friends and family. It certainly wows people, but when you're using it day to day, it just leads to a lot of frustration. After using the XPS 13 Plus for over a week, I still find cases where I miss a swipe, where I mean to swipe, or I do a right click when I mean a left click. It is something you'll probably get used to, but for a computer like this, you probably shouldn't have to retrain yourself. The XPS 13 Plus's keyboard is far more successful. It spans the entire length of the computer, and as I mentioned, it has practically no gaps between the keys. We saw something similar with HP Spectre X360 in 2019, but you know what? Dell goes even further. These keys are going all the way to the edge of the computer. The result is something that just feels really luxurious to type on. Like I can spread out my fingers kind of like I do on a desktop keyboard and it just feels super comfortable. It would be nice to have more than a millimeter of key travel, but you know what? This is something Dell has been doing for a while with the XPS 13, so I'm not too surprised by it. Looking at the haptic trackpad makes me wonder if Dell could ever use that technology to you know, add haptic motors underneath the keyboard to give you a deeper sensation of clicking. I also think that technology could help the capacitive function row feel a bit more like traditional keys. I do like that the function keys stay in place. It's not like the touch bar, like I mentioned, because the touch bar would keep changing things up with different shortcuts and uh, it would just get really, really confusing. I also wish the function row was more visible outdoors, uh, especially in direct sunlight. It can get a little washed out. I had a hard time seeing those outside. Aside from these new features, the XPS 13 Plus pretty much feels like an XPS 13. There's the aluminum case that feels, you know, as premium and sturdy as it ever did. Looking a bit closer at the case, you'll probably notice some omissions there. There are two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports on either side of the computer, but there's no headphone jack. That's something Dell also removed from the new XPS 13, and again, I just find it really, really baffling. To its credit, Dell is including USB-C to headphone jack adapters in the box with all of these computers. There's also a USB-C to USB type A connection in the box. So those are nice to have. Uh, unfortunately, because it only has two USB-C ports, you can't use both of those adapters while you're actually charging the computer. The way I see it, if Apple can squeeze a 3.5 millimeter jack into the MacBook Air, which weighs the same 2.7 pounds as the LCD equipped XPS 13 Plus, I don't think Dell has any excuse here. It's worth noting that the OLED model that we tested is a little heavier, it's 2.8 pounds, but still, my point stands. While we're talking about screens, if you wanna get a 4K or OLED screen in XPS this year, the 13 Plus is your only option. The standard XPS 13 only has 1080p LCD options. 
our review unit is equipped with the 3.5K OLED touchscreen model, which offers a decent 400 nits of brightness. It looks as nice as all the other XPS screens we've seen, you know, there's Dolby Vision, there's HDR support, and it looks just fine outdoors, but having a little more brightness would be even nicer when I'm using this thing in direct sunlight. This being an XPS 13, the Plus also has Dell's razor thin Infinity Edge bezels. Now, the effect is still really cool. It looks nice to have a display that's practically just floating in the air, but I would have liked to see Dell push things a little further. It's really hard to tell the difference between these bezels and what we saw in the 2020 uh, XPS 13. At least the webcam situation is a little better this time. The top bezel is a little thicker than the others because there's room for a 720p webcam and a separate Windows Hello IR sensor. I wish it had a higher resolution, but it does look pretty nice, especially if you're using it in good lighting. The last major upgrade in the XPS 13 Plus is something you can't even see. Under the hood, it's powered by 28 watt 12th gen Intel chips, whereas last year's XPS 13 had 15 watt 11th gen CPUs. And you know, that is a big difference. More energy, more power means better performance. Basically, that means this is the small XPS you'd wanna get if you wanna do some serious work. Our review unit was equipped with Intel's 12 core i7 1280p, the fastest chip available for the XPS 13 Plus. It's a hybrid 14 core CPU made up of six performance cores and eight efficiency cores. That sounds impressive on paper, and it really proved itself worthy in our benchmarks. In Geekbench 5, the XPS 13 Plus outpaced gaming laptops like the Razer Blade 15 and the Asus Zephyrus Duo, and it even came close to the much larger XPS 15. Not surprisingly, it also outclassed Lenovo's new Yoga 9i, another ultra portable running Intel's Iris Xe graphics and similar chips in Cinebench R23. That GPU doesn't really do much help when it comes to gaming though. In Halo Infinite, I could barely get things playable in 1080p with low settings, so I would not recommend it for that. Maybe with a lower impact game like Minecraft or Overwatch, it should just be fine. We tested the XPS 13 Plus in its ultra performance power mode, which spins up the fans and lets it run a little hotter. But for typical use, you can just use the optimized mode, which kind of balances things out a little more. But I'll tell you, even that mode I found to be a little too warm for using outside on my lap. To be fair, it was over 90 degrees in Atlanta, so maybe that's just it. I do wish the battery life was more impressive. The XPS 13 Plus lasted 12 and a half hours in our testing in optimized mode and nine and a half hours in ultra performance mode. But in the optimized mode, I did expect it to last you know, closer to 15 hours. The last XPS 13 we tested went close to 16 hours on battery life in our benchmark. For years, we've recommended the XPS 13 for anybody who just needs to get basic work done. And if you need more power for video editing or something, there's the XPS 15 and XPS 17. This year, Dell finally has an XPS 13 that can fit that build too. The only question is who would actually want that power in a system this small? There are some power users who may not need a ton of screen space, so you know, maybe this computer is for you. My only recommendation is to try and test this thing. I think it's on display at Best Buy and a couple other stores. Try and test it, try and get your hands on the trackpad and the keyboard and see if it's to your liking, because I do think some people are really gonna be annoyed by that trackpad. It's definitely something that's gonna keep me from using this long term. The XPS 13 Plus starts at $1,200 with a 512 gigabyte SSD, eight gigabytes of RAM, and a 1920 by 1200 full HD plus LCD monitor. As usual, I'd suggest bumping up to 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD for $1,499 if you're planning to keep using this for more than four years. And if you want OLED with these specs, you have to spend at least $1,799. Ultimately, I have to give Dell credit for trying to push laptop designs forward with the XPS 13 Plus. You know, like the Infinity Edge before it, a lot of ideas here are probably gonna show up in computers from competitors too. There's just really cool stuff going on on this computer. I just hope Dell ends up dealing with the potential usability issues eventually and maybe throw a headphone jack in there too. The way I see it, if you're trying to show us the future of computing, don't make it feel like a step backwards. Stay tuned to Engadget for more of our laptop reviews, and if you dug this video, be sure to like and subscribe.